Welcome to the Breaking 90 podcast, where we talk about all things sustainable fat loss. We take people on 90-day journeys to creating fat loss forever. Thanks for listening. I hope you enjoy the episode. Hello, everybody. Welcome back to the Breaking 90 podcast. I'm here today with my co-host, Kelly Sarlo. We are two of the coaches of Breaking 90 Fitness. Thank you guys for listening. We appreciate you being here. Hello, Alex. How are you? Hey, good. How are you doing? I'm good, thank you. I uh, what's new? Oh, as you know, um, I'm starting a YouTube channel of my own for completely unrelated topics that I'm very excited about. And uh, I spent about five to six hours recording for this this channel, and I was so proud. I got through like five videos. And then I dumped them all on my computer from my SD card and found out that I didn't save any of the audio properly. And I just like, (laughs) I was telling Devin, like I had a cry. I took myself for a walk, (laughs) came back and started all over again. It was just like an infuriating moment, but also a big learning moment. Huge. And and I was just going to ask you that. So like, what did you learn from this? What did you get out of this experience? Honestly, like, you know, I have two podcasts of my own. I do a podcast with you. I'm not a newbie to audio. And I got so overconfident, not double checking myself as I was saving things that I uh, highlighted one section and saved it improperly instead of highlighting the entire, the entire thing. So the lesson was double check your work, even though you've done it a thousand and one times, make sure that you're going through a process. The process exists for a reason. Um, So that's something I will not forget hopefully i was i was just recently listening this is a little sidetrack i was just recently listening to an audiobook about um teaching our children and uh it was about failing forward which i love i love yeah. that whole saying right like how we can how we can learn from every experience where we fail and they they talked about the participation award thing a lot which i i really like that topic um how participation awards have become so much more present in everything we everything kids do now uh there, there's lots of experiences now where there's no winner and everybody wins mm-hmm. and i i've always been really against this i think it's important to have some competitive edge to what we do um but they they brought a really interesting perspective about about this the importance of participation awards because it also it, it teaches our kids how to fail gracefully and and yeah how there's still some excitement and learning opportunities in failing, if you will. Um, So I thought that was pretty cool. That is really cool. Cause I've always taken your stance on that and been like, no, Yeah. (laughs) but uh, that that is really neat. Cause I think about being in a classroom and not wanting to raise your hand because you're not 101% certain that you've got the right answer. When you have a teacher say, nice guess, you know, almost, and you have that encouragement that you're not wrong in the sense of you as a person are wrong you know you miss the answer but we're still going to learn something like it's it's kind of the same same lesson in terms of participation award totally yeah Yeah. that's cool um and that's not even our topic today well it was it's been fun already what's the topic (laughs) my topic for today is the need to be outdoors Ooh. okay so um I was out for a a trail run earlier this morning and um, just kind of thinking about the importance of being outdoors and how it's something that um, I think is is becoming less and less common in people's lives. Maybe it's not. Maybe it just feels that way. But um, I think it's something that we can really easily overlook, just like our water consumption. (laughs) <laughs> right we, we we think about those big those big factors in our life that we're trying to prioritize if you're on health and fitness journey you often think about your nutrition and your total movement um or your nutrition and your workout uh but like neglect some of those smaller factors like getting outdoors and i think i think it's it's so important that it it deserves some attention here too so um yeah what are your thoughts I think your observations are fair and correct me if I'm wrong, but I feel like you and I are of a generation that were kind of the last kids to play outside um, in our childhood. Right. And with the increase of screen time, lots of learning is happening. Don't get me wrong. Like kids are 
insanely adept with with technology these days in ways that we were not. Um, but certainly being outside, being connected to nature, um, learning how to be bored uh, is missing in a lot of children. And outside creates that opportunity to discover an entire literal new world than what we're used to being inside. Um, I think we can take this in a lot of different directions. Do you want to lead or do you want me to just yeah. go one? Yeah, sure. So, well, I want to highlight something you mentioned there sure. and that the, it's the, the screen time with kids right now. Um, I don't think this is the kid's fault or the parent's fault because it's, it's so much more convenient now and it's so much more engaging now. When we, when we were kids, there wasn't the option to stream endless amounts of whatever we want to watch at a moment's notice. It wasn't as convenient. It was like, okay, at this time, I, I know Flintstones is playing and I need to, I need, that's what I want to watch. But otherwise TV sucks today. So I'm going to find another option, right? Like kids, if they want to watch a show, can watch the entire series. Yeah. It's wild. And it's, it's not anybody's fault, but it's certainly something we need to be aware of because it's, it's, uh, yeah, well, it's, it's, it's very, it's very harmful. <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah. Um, so I want to talk about some of the benefits of, of the outdoors. Um, I kind of wrote four categories down and I know they all mesh together, but basically our physical health, our mental health, our emotional health, and then just our general health. Um, there's there's so so many benefits to being outside and I think <clears throat> I think if we look for these small opportunities it can it can pay off in massive dividends so um starting from a starting from a physical health category mm -hmm. um I think this is a huge missed opportunity for a lot of people not combining your outdoor time with physical health opportunities mm -hmm. because it feels daunting when we have this big big list of things I should do and ideals and like if I tell you that you you now need to get outside for an extra 10 minutes per day um it's like oh great he added another thing to my to-do <laughs> list yeah but if you have an opportunity to combine it and not add anything into your life you should yeah. if it means that you're going to miss one workout this week in a in an enclosed gym I'm not saying always do that especially if you have specific goals like there, there's a lot of importance to our strength training and that kind of thing but if it means that you're going to miss one workout and you're going to get a get out in nature and go for an awesome hike on a beautiful day um take that opportunity <laughs> yeah and even taking some of the, the portions of your workout might be your stretching or your warm-up take it outside into the parking lot or take it home and do your stretching on the deck, right? Like there's, there's ways where you don't necessarily have to add more time. It can simply be, you move an item or article onto the deck or into your driveway. My free weights I can take out there. I can decide to substitute a workout um, to do body resistance on a yoga mat outside instead of, you know, what I might've done in a gym. I know yeah. you're saying it's dependent on what the goals are and to still stay in alignment with that. Um, but there's tons of opportunity to make it accessible to you. Yeah, 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 totally. And if you're the type of person that religiously works out three, four, five times a week, uh, every single week, and, and there's one beautiful day outside and you have a chance to take advantage of that, a friend offers to have you go do a hike with them and you, you have an opportunity to there make a connection with another person and get your exercise in and get outdoors like it's it's really you're never going to notice missing that one workout truthfully you won't um we all get sick and miss like three four weeks here and there for vacation and whatever injuries like one workout isn't going to affect your progress especially if you're substituting it for another form of physical activity mm -hmm. so I think I think that uh can ease a lot of people's minds when they're like I just don't have the time I need to get my workout in it's so important yeah I think you know so far we're just talking about <laughs> being physical outside and there's plenty more opportunity right like I have a coffee religiously every single morning with Karen and cool. we could easily take those coffees from the living room onto the deck or onto the porch or on our walk with us if we do want to be physical, right? Like there's an ability to just take the activity itself 
even if it isn't physical, and enjoy that outside. We can take our meal outside on a lunch break instead of sitting in the cafeteria or the lunchroom um, and just enjoy those 10 minutes of fresh air. Absolutely. Devin and I, um, for like as long as we were able to stuff Emerson in a stroller, would have our, she drinks tea, but I drink coffee. So we'd have our coffee and tea while walking the mm -hmm. water because yeah. it was beautiful. We'd get outside. It wasn't about like it, the exercise component was a bonus don't get me wrong mm -hmm. um but we, it was just like the most beautiful way to get in those extra steps and exercise and connection with each other um as long as we could stuff them in that stroller now that we can't that's, <laughs> that's certainly something we miss but he's he's gonna get to the age now where he'll be able to bike along with us right so looking for those type of opportunities is is massive and you just combined another piece that's really important is the connection of quality time with other people, right? And you can do this with alone time too. That's a different kind of connection as well. That's vital oh, to yeah. mental and emotional health. Um, taking yourself outside just for a walk or to sit. I have said so often to people in this Northern Ontario winter, um, just sit in a snowsuit and tilt your head up to the sun for five minutes if that's all you can do before your nostrils freeze. Like that little amount of time where you can get some fresh air and some vitamin D, which I'm sure is a whole other uh, topic, is so important to your overall health. I wrote that down actually, which I think is cool that you mentioned that, but um, this can be for connection or to remove yourself from being around people. So if you if you work in and this <clears throat> this really um for people who are sedentary all day or are stuck in a home all day, I know a lot of people's jobs have now forced them to work from home. So you're in a house where you don't see people all day and you have an opportunity now to get outside and make connection by going to walk like a waterfront or something like that that's that's an opportunity but on the flip side you work in an office where you're around people all day and and there's a ton of benefit to you getting some alone time this is another chance to take advantage of that take yourself out somewhere where where you're not being jammed around people all day yep. um it's it's so easy to get caught up in our day-to-day -day norms and be like well this is my life i do this and this and this challenge yourself a little bit here get outside <laughs> of your comfort zone yeah like this is this is uh where we often get so scared to push our comfort zone we, we talk about it a lot with our bare ass minimums and just committing to what you're able to but like sooner or later you you have to push that comfort zone it mm -hmm. can't always be about your bare ass minimums yeah love mm. it all right what's your next um one? they all they all kind of mesh together so from a mental health standpoint i wanted to talk about the the payoff in a s stress anxiety and sleep cool. side of things so um it's it's not just that it makes you feel better it's actually making you feel better like this isn't just a mind trick there's there's mm. actual things happening here that are going to help you lower your stress levels, lower your anxiety levels, and help you sleep better. And all three of these things um, go hand in hand. If you can improve your stress levels, you can almost always improve your sleep. Mm -hmm. If you can improve your sleep, you can almost always improve your stress levels. Getting outside is going to help you with both of those. I know we've all had those days where we've been outside a ton and you come home and you crash, right? that's that's not just a trick happening that's 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 real um obviously we can't always have those days where you you walk around like Canada's Wonderland for eight hours and you're exhausted but in smaller measurements five ten fifteen minute increments it's still having the same effect in smaller measurements and that's that's really important to keep in the back of your mind yeah, I love that <laughs> Um, we can even go, not, not, I won't go into too much detail, but like into quantum physics, right? Like they have proven that there is an energetic heartbeat at the core of earth, that there is a pulse like a heartbeat, right? And so it's no fluke that people say to you, if you need to reset your circadian rhythm, go camping for a week, right? Be unplugged and only in touch with the rhythm of nature so that your body can get back to the natural cycles. These are scientifically proven things. So if you're disputing the importance of being outside, 
maybe let's do some research, read it outside if you need to. Like this is something that's going to help you in all of the different systems help you get back to regulating them and not on your 16 hour workday system, but on your actual natural rhythms. And I think that's fascinating and really, um, I want to say hopeful because I think with the amount of stress that we have, also the amount of stress that we are encouraged to incur by our society, um, that can make us feel hopeless in terms of our energy and our ability to get back in touch with it, with what's most natural to us. Yeah, that's awesome. Um, <clears throat> I need to circle back to the physical side, but I won't do it yet. Um, what what you just said there brings brings me right into the the emotional side of things too, right? Like what this is going to do just for our mood and temperament and and the way that we feel. Yeah. Um, when you do take that time for yourself, it's it's always going to. It, a ton of clarity on whatever it is that's that's clogging up your mind right now mm -hmm. um and b leave you feeling better for sure like just it's it's you're 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 going to come out of that in a way better mood <laughs> there's no doubt about that you're bringing this up and I'm curious to know, like, when you say to get it into nature, are you also making the assumption that we are not um connecting to something else like throwing on an audible book and tossing on a podcast and like distracting ourselves even further or how how are you um how are you encouraging I, I, people to be I think it depends on the person honestly like and and this goes with like compounding your tasks too if, if it's really important to you to read that book or listen to that book um or go for a walk like do both at the same time <laughs> right if those are both really important things to you do yeah. both at the same time if you have an opportunity to disconnect from technology um i think it's i think everybody should at least once a day at least once a week at least once a month have have these these chances to disconnect from technology completely mm -hmm. um so maybe your once a day is like a five minute thing your once a week is like an hour long thing and your once a month is like a full day thing oh. um but it doesn't always have to be that, especially if that makes it a less, like if that's a less enjoyable thing for you. Like I like, if I'm running the streets, I'd rather run the streets listening to music. Mm -hmm. um, if I'm running in the bush, I don't care. I, I can't, I got to stop saying in the bush because people are like, what are you talking about? The, the Americans listening to this are like, what is he talking about? Because that's a, that's a really Northern Ontario thing. So if I'm running through the forest. <laughs> <laughs> uh-huh um so I think I think it's situation dependent but what what are your thoughts no I really like that yeah I think circumstance and uh environment make a big difference mm. uh, especially too if you're if you're debating about safety right like if you're doing a night walk and you're in an area where you should be more alert headphones probably not advisable right being out in nature is something that you might be um, focusing on to get fresh air and movement but not necessarily um, to be at one with your environment if that's the intent when you're going on a hike midday and there's lots of people around yeah 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 um on our run today somebody had her dog off its leash and it like charged up to us and it was like trying to play with Macy and I was like pulling Macy back and she's like, oh, don't worry. Like, my dog's super friendly. I was like, yes, but mine isn't. And yeah. that's why I've got her on a leash. I'm keeping her away from your dog. So, mm -hmm. so please call your dog away. <laughs> yeah. Well, um, sorry, go ahead. It's it, it just like one of those things where, I, because I didn't have headphones on, it was easier to navigate the situation there. Yeah. <laughs> Eric goes mountain biking in our trails here in North Bay. And a lot of pedestrians on the trails don't understand or know that they are actually biking trails. They're, they're, um, created and maintained by our mountain biking society. And so people who are running and walking will go in with headphones on, not understanding that there's a lack of safety with bikes yeah. who are literally trying to make their personal bests with time yeah. flying yeah. down the hill, right? So eh, maybe not the best time to be connecting to your podcast. Um, maybe just be one with nature in that moment and alert yeah, to your yeah. surroundings. Absolutely. Um the quick circle back, I wanted to do the physical health. So if you're looking for opportunities, if it, I see this too often where we, we, we try to minimize our time outside. So like walking our kid to school, walking to and from stores or work or whatever it might be, like park a little bit further. That's still time outside. 
I'm not saying it's <clears throat> the best source of time outside, but it is time outside. Yeah. <laughs> if you're if you're going to a gym and parking in the absolute closest spot, something is wrong here. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to the gym to exercise. So extra steps aren't going to hurt you. Yeah. Or like park a little bit further, spend those two minutes outside walking. I, that That's the one thing I wanted to add that I forgot to do the physical side. So, um, okay. So from a health, a general health benefit standpoint, it's going to improve our immune systems. As I sit here, all congested. <laughs> um, it's going to increase our air quality. Mm -hmm that we're we're exposed to and it's going to expose us to vitamin d and those are just three those are just three like there, there's there's a lot more that can go into this I'm, I'm i don't want to pretend to be an expert on all of this because i'm not um but those three alone massive massive impact uh increasing your air quality when you're stuck in a stuffy building all day long um, being exposed to that fresh air like that's that's a real thing the vitamin d exposures i know there's been a lot of research on vitamin d in the past few years and a lot of people are supplementing vitamin d now which is fine um but if you can get it naturally do it <laughs> right like if we can increase our natural exposure it's it's always it's always going to be better just like in eating real protein is better than supplementing protein yeah. Um, anytime we can do this naturally and get away from medications and, and, um, supplements like the, the, why not take that opportunity? Uh, and then the improvement to our immune system, especially now, while our immune systems are, uh, in a, in a big recovery state from being exposed to less people over the past couple of years and, and wearing masks a lot and not, um, not being out around snotty little kids all the time. Um, now more than ever, we need to work on increasing our immune systems, right? Yeah, that's awesome. <clears throat> that's everything that I wanted to cover. I know I'm going to kick myself because I probably missed something here. Um, we'll so part two. what's that? We'll have a part two. Yeah. So my challenge for you guys listening to this, challenge yourselves, be willing to step outside of your comfort zone and find an opportunity to include this into your normal routine. If you can't do it daily, don't fall into the all or nothing thinking. Look for a couple times a week where you can include it. Um, but also be willing to push your boundaries a little bit because I think you, I think you can do it daily. I really do. If you're listening to this, your health is is obviously a big priority in your life. I think you can do it daily. So try to push yourself a little bit here. Um, I'm curious to hear what you guys think and, and how you're going to include this into your routine. I think it's a really, really um, important topic. And I think it'll resonate with a lot of you because we've all been there sitting at home and being like, yeah, yeah, you know what? I, I should prioritize that a little bit more. So let's hear it. Um, yeah, I look forward to hearing other people's uh, answers to your questions because it gives us ideas, right? When we're brainstorming together, just by vocalizing what we're already doing, it gives the next person an idea of something that they missed, right? And and that's a community building each other up. Yeah. Yep. 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 Um, what do you have for us for a tip today, Kelly? Well, it is uh, getting colder. It's it's the season where I want hot meals and I want to feel comforted and cozy. So it was actually just a tip um, in the kitchen to use your Dutch oven for big batch meals. We did a whole chicken with carrots, onions, and squash and lots of garlic, of course. Um, and it's, it's probably going to feed us for like three meals each. And it's good for lunches. It's good for dinners. Uh, like it's it's just something that doesn't take a lot of time. It all goes into one pot at one time and you, you can buy back some of your time if you're used to doing larger, um, larger meals or more meal prep. So hopefully this is something that can both comfort you and save you time. Totally. If you're, if you're taking the, if you're pressed for time, which I'm assuming you are, if you're listening to this <clears throat> and you're taking the time to prepare a meal, don't waste an opportunity by not making leftovers. Yeah. That's yeah. So that's a great tip. That job is well, for the win. Nice. Thank you guys for listening. 
I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you took something from this episode. Make sure you reach out and let us know if you listen to this. And and also, um, we'd love it if you shared it to your social media. All you have to do is take a screenshot wherever you're listening and share it to your Instagram story and tag us in it so that we can see you guys listening. Um, we appreciate you being here. That's why we keep putting out the episodes. So we love seeing um, that you guys are actually getting some value from this. So thanks for being here and we'll see you in the next episode. Thank you.